Happy New Year and welcome back to the channel. This is me back in the summer of 2021. Besides looking like stock, I had primitive racing skid plates, 2 inch lift Ironman ATS suspension, 27 inch KO2 all terrains, disconnected sway bars, and very little experience. And there's nothing I could do to protect the side rockers of this vehicle. Fast forward to a year later, it now stands over four and a half inches over stock due to spacers over the ATS suspension. I've also added a rear locker to help with traction and I've cut the bumpers for approach and departure angle. However, it did not stop me from doing this. This. That. Ooh, that's why I need sliders. I need a rock sliders real bad. But all the cross check sliders are all the same. Two pointed, they lost ground clearance, they were weak, they turned to banana one hit. There's even a set out there that's made of skate plate material. I played around with Photoshop and these are truck sliders stuck onto the car. They are inch and a half tubing stuck to the pinch welds as well as the front and rear mounts along with the 10 degree upkick but there was no shop that would make it for me. I figured I would just do with smash pinch welds. Meet Sly. He drives a 2021 Subaru Crossjack Limited. I consider him my equal, although his car looks a little better than mine. Although we both live in different states, we share the same passion as far as increasing the limits of the cross-track platform. And besides being successful so far, there's something that Sly and I can agree upon. There is no set of rock sliders out there that's fit for our style of wheeling. We turned to Matt Cam from Full Force Metalworks to develop a set of rock sliders and a hybrid bumper, and he immediately jumped on board. So Sly arranged the weekend at Matt's shop to build some prototype sliders. Matt is an artist and excellent welder. He's no stranger to building off-road parts outside of Subarus. However, this is an atypical way of installing rock sliders, especially on a car. We give our inputs. Uh, I want to disconnect this bracket here and slide my bracket behind there so it'll drop this a quarter inch. I'm not sure if that'll cause a problem with alignment. Yeah, Joe, what do you think? I thought it was a great idea. A few hours later, Sly sends me videos of him using the sliders as a jack point. The middle is what got me. There's little to zero deflection raising the center of the car. And had he gotten these sliders before, that debt would never have been there to begin with. Other tubular rock sliders won't survive this. There's that rock slider. They would have definitely ruined your breakover angle while turning to a banana. Keep in mind, this was only a prototype. There've already been two different iterations of it. Now I have the final version, version three. The base construction is still the same as the original. 1.5 inch diameter tubing with 0.120 inch thick walls. Strength improvements have been made between the tubing as well as pinch weld mount locations. Grade eight bolts, nuts, and washers are all included. You get a little extra just in case you strip something. To avoid the inevitable shipping blemishes from Tennessee to Hawaii, I had Matt send the sliders to me bare, which I later had powder coated matte black. On with the install. In this particular installation, we'll be focusing on the passenger side. You notice that one or a few of my pop clips have already gone missing because of the trail damage, but you're gonna locate all the pop clips, which consists of using a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver. There's one pop clip that used to reside here, but it's no longer there because I've made clearance for these big tires. You will use a flathead screwdriver to remove the large pop clips. Just pop one side off, pry the other side out, and pull it off with your hand. On the very front and rear undersides, there are these smaller Phillips head pop clips that you're going to have to unscrew and then pull out with your hand. From here, it's all a matter of ripping it off the side rocker. Keep in mind, you might have some gifts of nature. Next, we're gonna remove these seven rubber plugs. I found that these get in the way when we align the slider to the pinch weld. I would recommend using a plastic pry tool, anything non-metallic to not scratch your paint finish. Also keep these nearby because we're going to use them. 
removing the side skirt will also leave these pop clip gaskets. Make sure you take these off as well. I was attempting to reinstall the side skirts, but they're damaged beyond repair. You can see that large hole. Some of the pop clips have gone missing. Same story on the other side. But if you're handy with a knife, you can notch a side skirt and fit it perfectly above the slider. Since my rocker will be exposed, I'll just go ahead and clean it out, make sure there's no other damages that I need to take care of. The first order of business is to straighten out any crooked or damaged pinch weld. This is integral to the structure of the slider, so make sure that gets fixed first. But before we do that, we're going to have to remove some of the plastic covering under the car, which is you'll find pop clips and bolts scattered all over the place. Just find them all, remove them until you get them off and loose. These are 12 millimeter bolts for the gas tank. If you're new to this channel, like, share, and subscribe to your friends. Don't forget to hit the notification bell for more updates on future uploads. That would help the YouTube algorithm expose me more for this type of content. Once the gas tank covers off, go ahead and go to the front of the car. There are two 10 millimeter bolts that need to be removed. Anything further back are all fill up head screwdriver pop clips. Remove until everything falls down. On social media, you can find me at OC Turbo Joe. There I have all my mods and my explanation of my mods. And any kind of information that you want to ask, you just go ahead and hit me in the DMs if you need to. I'll answer them as best as I can. Sorry, I don't have TikTok or OnlyFans. I'm too old for that shit. Once you got all the hardware off, slowly bring it down. There is bound to be more nature's gifts and extra weight. You can take the time to clean it up because you'll be rolling all up in it on the floor. Now that you've provided yourself enough room for a mallet, use it to hit the pinch weld straight. Besides the falling dust, it gets pretty loud. Go ahead and get some hearing protection. Some of you who don't take your cross check out to the extremes shouldn't have to do this. This is mainly for those that really wheel pretty hard. So if you do not wheel, you can skip this step and go to the next one, which is to install the front and rear rock slider brackets. Locate the two 12 millimeter bolts along the rear of the frame where you remove the gas tank cover. Also pay attention to that threaded hole ahead of those two bolts. That's the 12 millimeter bolt that you remove from the gas tank cover. You're going to reuse that again to mount this plate. This is a passenger side which has those two bolts to remove and they're on an up kick just like this. The other side should be opposite. You're going to take this bracket and replace the bolts that you just removed to temporarily install them. Going to the front, take your 19 millimeter socket and breaker bar and break the two front control arm bracket bolts. These are going to have to be removed once you loosen them. Next is to grab that same 19 millimeter socket and loosen the lower control arm rear stud nut just loosen not remove when you've lowered it enough it should look like this there should be about three eighths to a half inch gap between the bracket and the chassis to install the front bracket just a heads up the front brackets are interchangeable from left to right position this bracket like so and slide them in you're going to take those two bolts that you removed and install them temporarily. Make sure you take your time installing these bolts by hand. 
you don't want to go to town and use a tool on it otherwise you're going to strip the bolt and the threads of the chassis and have a really bad day when you're done it should look like this yeah they're a little crooked right now but they're loose for acting as a shelf to help you hold your sliders up as you align the pinch weld to the brackets you can use jacks you can use a friend i uh, use jacks first and make sure i get good enough support to set my length or positioning of the sliders to wherever i want them to be these are also one of those things where you need to take your time measure a lot and then cut once because once you drill those holes you're stuck with them once i got the positioning good i used the jack with some microfiber to protect the finish of the slider and bring it up to the pinch weld in addition to lining up the rock slider holes to the pinch weld we're also going to look at aligning the slots on the rock slider brackets and the chassis brackets you just installed Now when you're happy with the positioning of your rock slider, take the included hardware and temporarily and loosely install them into the brackets of both slider and the chassis. You'll find that this fender touches the slider, so we'll deal with it later. Take an etching tool or scribe and mark the holes for you to drill. Make sure there's enough meat below the pinch weld to allow the bolt to hold onto it. Once the marks are established, lower the rock slider and you're going to take a drill and drill your pinch welds. But before that, for the front fender, you're going to take a rubber mallet with a microfiber or anything to protect the surface and pound the fender upwards to match the side rocker. Get a starter punch or a sharpie to verify your marks for the pinch weld holes. I like to start with a small drill bit. I use a 3 16 and then I graduate it up to a 3 8 drill bit. Clean up the holes with a file to allow the hardware to sit flush when you mount them. You're going to then coat the holes with some kind of rust inhibitor or spray paint. I use POR15, which is paint over rust. I live in a corrosive environment here in Hawaii, so it's important to cover all the bare metal. After painting it, I want a lunch break and let it cure. All right, home stretch. All you got to do is raise the rock slider back up over the brackets and against the holes that you just made. Since everything's verified and true, we will just bolt everything right up. When you verified everything is lined up, take your 13 millimeter bolt and washer, slide it through this way. I found this way to be easier. You can also do it the other way. However, you cannot put a washer on the pinch weld. You're going to repeat this step for the other three pinch weld brackets. At this point, you can lower the jack because the bolts are holding the rock slider up. You can go ahead and start installing the 13 millimeter head hardware. So the orientation is a bolt washer on the bottom and a washer and nut on top. You can go ahead and start tightening and torquing the pinch weld bolts to 25 foot-pounds. Working our way to the front, tighten all nuts and bolts at the front control assembly.
torque the lower control arm nut to 110 foot pounds. Then torque the two bracket bolts to 150 foot pounds. Work your way back towards the front bracket and tighten all the nuts and bolts to 25 foot pounds. At the rear bracket, the OEM 12 millimeter bolts are 18 foot pounds. And the 13 millimeter bolts and nuts are 25 foot pounds. And we're finally done. Not quite. But in the meantime, while we gawk at the rock sliders, I want to thank a couple of people who have made this possible. I'd like to thank Rafael Rubio from California for helping me get these sliders over here. And Makala Powdercoat for doing a great job at providing a nice finish that I will destroy at the trail. Big mahalo to both of you. Replace all these plugs that you removed in the beginning. Some of them might be hard to get to, but with a little creativity, you can get them all in. You're going to have to cut some of the plastic off. I made some markings to where they interfere with the brackets. You may need to cut more. It depends. Just place it up there and figure it out. Here's all the panels reinstalled, gas tank, and forward frame. For the rocker holes, I've used these plugs from Napa. You can pause for the part number. For the rear, I've chopped it in half because it's a shallow hole. Just like that. They're serrated. Pop them right in. Initially, these go in tight, but they sit a little loose and they're good for water drainage for deep crossings. From afar, they look like rivets with a little industrial look to them versus looking at holes. All right, one more step before we call it done. See that mark right there from the side skirt? Just take some goo gone and a microfiber towel, dab it on there and just rub away. It should disappear. And this completes the install of the Full Force Metalworks Rock Sliders. You can now enjoy your time on the trails without worrying about destroying your pinch welds with durability, strength, and extra ground clearance. Speaking of ground clearance, before installing the rock sliders, minimum ground clearance was shortly a hair below 13 and 3 quarter inches. After the slider install, I've only lost 3 eighths of an inch. This concludes part 1 of the Full Force Metalworks series. On the next episode, I'll be installing a hybrid winch bumper. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.